going a little route that will bring the chivalry of the party in for one more fling. Sure. If there's any enthusiasm left by that time tonight. And also in this connection, I uh, ran into Leon Henderson. You may have heard the name, Leon Former Henderson. head of the OPA, that's Former right. head of the, and head of the ADA. Can before, I say that here? Sure, that's all right. With Mr. Be Farley? Before you go into that, let me say that we got a quick message from our televiewers in New York saying, hey, we can't see this guy, kind of. Tell him to turn around. So turn well, around, will you? All right. I know you will. <laughs> go ahead. No, but anyways, I uh, saw Mr. Henderson, and he's yeah. complaining bitterly because at the... At the Republican convention, mind you, he was a sergeant at arms, had credentials, got he into a, he every a meeting. He's a, he was a Democrat. And now, at this one, he's doing very badly indeed. He says he's had trouble getting into the convention. So uh, maybe uh, maybe his man isn't doing so well. The New Deal is getting a raw deal. In the New Deal is getting what is known as a runaround. Well, Frank, uh, it was awfully nice to have you with us this afternoon. You warned me when uh, you came on you couldn't stay long because you did have a deadline to meet, so we'll let you go. That's right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks much, Frank Conniff, east side, west side, for coming way down south side to Philadelphia right. to see us. Thank you. <laughs> it was very good to have you here, and I hope you find your mother and bring her to see us when you do, will you? Well, as I say, friends, we have a, certainly a galaxy of guests with us here um, in our WPIX studio this afternoon, and I believe that Ben Gross is ready to introduce our next one to you now. Ben? Well, thank you, Rakes. I have here with me a celebrated Washington hostess and newspaper woman, Mrs. Chip Robert, uh, the uh, wife of Chip Robert, uh, former assistant secretary of the Treasury and former secretary and treasurer of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, Evie Robert, as she is known, writes a column, Eve's Rebs, for the Washington Times Herald. So here she is. Hello, Evie. How are you? Hello, Ben. Now, look, Evie, let's get down to business. I understand that this is your first time on television. It sure is. Well, what, how does it strike you? Well, with the lights, I'm even scared of a mic. And two cameras and the lights, it isn't just like home. Well, how, how does the spirit of this convention impress you, compared with the others, that is, Evie? Well, I think it's duller than any of the others. The gayest thing is this fellow out here on the sound truck rooting for Eisenhower. Yes, he said Night he has been rooting, day. hadn't he? Now, look, Evie, let's get down to Washington just for a minute. You are known as a social leader in Washington. I'd like to know, who do you think is the greatest hostess down there? Sissy Patterson. Why do you say that? Well, she really thinks it out and puts her heart into it and does more than just have the food and the liquor. Well, that's very interesting to hear. Well, let's come back to Philadelphia again. Uh, who do you think, I mean, uh, who do you think will be the vice president rather than whom you want? Oh, gee, well, every other person you see is a... Is, is one that's running. They're so nice to you here in Washington. They pass you on the street yes, here. They just so. clap you on the back. They're <laughs> all running. Are they all pals? Anyway? All pals. Well, look, Evie, who would you like to see to be vice president? Now? Oh, well, now, that's a different matter. Like to see. I have my man, but I don't sing who until the hymn is given out. Oh, well, you're not going to sing now? Not until the oh, hymn is well, given Evie. out. Well, now, look at this. Let's come to something more serious. I'm sure you'll consider this seriously. Last night, as you know, right here in this studio, Claude Pepper announced that he was a candidate for the presidency. Now, what do you think of that? Well, I, I don't want to tell you. I, I could not? tell you. Well, why won't well, you? Well, this is my first time on television, and I don't intend to be put <laughs> off by telling you what <laughs> I think of Brother Pepper. Well, I see that. In other words, you don't want to be censored. That's right. Now, Evie, we're not going to censor you. But I tell you, we're going to let you out easily by asking you a simple question. What do you think the Democratic Party is going to do in November? Now, listen, you can't ask me that. Why not? You'll have to ask Chip. He's the one well, that does that's all right. the real well, talk. Here is Chip Robert. Hello, Chip. How do you do? Now, suppose you answer that question. In other words, what are the chances of the party in November? Well, I think they're lots better than the Republicans have had for about 16 years. You think that they have a better chance than the Republicans? Have had for 16 years. Why, yes. will you explain that? Well, they had a pretty good chance, but they haven't done anything for 16 years. I think we have a better chance than they had in any time for the last 16 years. And you really think that all this dissension is not going to affect the party? You think that the Democrats are going to win? Well, I'll tell you, when you get a lot of fights started like this, if they'll carry it on through the campaign, it'll get lots further than the 
mood of the city is here today. Well, you know, I'd like to ask you this. How come, with all the gloom around here, you are such an outstanding optimist? You're the most optimistic guy I've met at this convention. I've never gotten anything being pessimistic. Well, I agree with that. Well, uh, Chip, Robert, it's been a great pleasure to have you, and it's been a great pleasure to have you here, Evie. And I'm sure that our audience has enjoyed seeing you. And now again, I'm going to turn you over to our master ceremonies, Rex Marshall. All right, Ben. Tell of yours, this kind of sounds like a tinkum to Evers to Chance uh, play going on here. B ben Gross and Rex Marshall back and forth. We haven't gotten Chance in yet. He will be taken up by Jimmy Jamail when the third part of our triple play comes in very shortly. But uh, before we introduce Jimmy and his guests, I would like to introduce to you uh, three guests whom I have sitting right here. You know, the smoke-filled room of uh, political conventions is becoming sort of antiquated. The aroma of cigar smoke is retreating rapidly before Chanel number no. 5. Uh, the ladies are coming into their own at last, as you well know if you've been following the political conventions over WPIX. We have three of those ladies here with us right now, and they are reading one, two, three. Uh, Congresswoman Georgia Lusk of New Mexico. How are you, Mrs. Lusk? I'm just fine. Mrs. Catherine White of New Jersey. Mrs. White, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. And Ms. Genevieve Blatt of Pennsylvania. How are you, Ms. Blatt? I'm fine, thank you. Well, now, I would like to go down the line again and ask each of you a question or two about what you and other ladies do in the political arena, or should we call it the governmental arena, Mrs. Blatt? Governmental sounds better. How did you uh, get to be a congresswoman? I, I know you were elected, but in other words, what uh, prompted you to get elected? Well, the boost that uh, put me into the uh, representative chair was uh, my work in education, public education in Mexico. I see. My next question is, uh, why did you undertake this rather arduous career? Uh, government has always been interesting to me, and uh, I feel that before we do very much more with public education, we need a, a legislative foundation to improve the general situation. And, uh, and you think the, the ladies can? Was there and I took advantage of it. You think the ladies can supply that foundation? Eh? I think ladies can do as uh, much towards supplying it as the uh, average member of Congress. How many uh, Congresswomen are there at present? There are seven. Well, that's quite a distinction for you, being one of seven. Do you continue? Uh, do you expect to continue being a Congresswoman? In other no. words, will you run again? Uh, unfortunately, I lost out in the prime, recent primary in Mexico. Oh, I see. So I won't go back this year, but I'm looking forward to going back the next time. Uh -huh. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Mrs. Lusk. Now I'd like to direct a question at Mrs. White. Yes. Uh, Mrs. White, you are uh, Secretary of the New Jersey delegation, right? Yes, I am. Well, tell me, why did you decide to actively undertake uh, uh, government in the manner that you have? Well, I think I was rather brought up in the field of government and always felt it's important. Mm -hmm. And I do think that women uh, should not sit home and complain about how their government is run unless they take an active part in it themselves. I see. And I felt very strongly that women should go out and work in the field of government and politics on the local level and the state and the national level. Well, that certainly is a very well-phrased answer to my question, and it should uh, prove of considerable value to our feminine televiewers. Now I'd like to uh, turn our attention to Miss Blatt of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Miss Blatt is our is our Portia. She is a, a practicing lawyer. That's right, isn't it, Miss Blatt? Well, now uh, we know that lots of lawyers have gotten into politics. Uh, was that how you happened to get into politics? You just sort of slide into it from being a, an, a, an attorney? No, I deliberately studied law so that I could be a more effective politician. Very good. Before I. Uh, get into something else, uh, tell me, uh, what is your job here? You're secretary of the Pennsylvania delegation, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, keeping you pretty busy? Pretty busy. Well, all right, now, harking back to your answer, you studied law so you could get into politics. Just why did you want to get into politics? Well, when I was in college, I majored in political science and had the teachers tell me a great deal about what was wrong with government, and I thought, for one thing, I'd like to find out if they were right, and if they were right, I thought I'd like to change things a little. Are you succeeding? Well, time will tell. All right. I hope that we'll hear. From, I hope that we'll hear from you when you get the answer. We'd like to know ourselves. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Lusk, Mrs. White, and Ms. Blatt for being with us this afternoon. And I hope that you will stay now as uh, we introduce the famous inquiring photographer, uh, Jimmy Jamail, who has some guests with him. Jimmy, are you ready? I'm all ready, thank you. Uh, the first uh, gentleman I have is uh, tell us your name. Mr. Oh, uh, Baker. Uh, Mr. Baker, uh, what what are you here for? Well, Who's your group? Who's I your represent group? the Young Democratic Clubs of America, Jimmy. It's the largest and most enthusiastic young people's political group in America. 
Are they here with you? Yes, they're here. I, I'd like to say this, Jimmy, that our organization was founded and organized under the guiding hand and genius of one of the greatest Democrats, James A. Farley. I see. There's Jimmy still sitting over there, too. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And we're, being, we're trying to carry on in the great ideals and principles that he laid down for our organization. Yes, Jimmy, we, Jimmy and Truman <coughs> repaired my column the other day together, answering one of my questions. I'm glad to see Jimmy here. They're both great Democrats. Yes, sir. Uh, I agree with you. Can you bring your group on? Yes, we have some of our representatives. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Miss Angela Parisi. Miss oh, Parisi is Miss from Parisi. New York. Yes, from New York, yes. From Brooklyn. From Brooklyn, yes. And uh, Miss Elizabeth Gant. Miss Gant, yeah. Uh, Miss Gant's with our national organization. Come right over here, Miss Gant. And, Fine. Uh, Miss Paige Goldman. Miss Goldman. An outstanding young Democrat from Illinois. Uh -huh. And uh, Mr. Hoover Taft. Hoover Taft. National treasure. Hoover Taft. Mr. Hoover Taft, the question for you. How'd you get that name? Hoover Taft. Are you a Democrat? And oh, Hoover Taft? Definitely. How'd you get that name? Well, first of all, I, I had nothing to do with that, but my father and mother gave it to me. My father was named Hoover Taft. <laughs> I see. Well, but frankly, you know, it makes it even more uh, invigorating for me to get out and fight the fights of the Democratic Party and to show uh, the people in this country that we really are behind the Democratic Thank Party. Thank you very much. You have one more, man. One Mr. more, Mr. Yeah. Benson Gorn, our executive secretary. Come over here, Mr. Gorn. Sure. What part are the young Democrats taking?